so today i am going to talk about uh, gemini effect so here i am not considering here the spin orbit sorry electron spin means i am going to talk about the gemini effect without spin right so before discussing gemini effect Uh, using perturbation theory because my motive is to understand the Gemini effect using perturbation theory means how perturbation theory used to explain the Gemini effect so before discussing Gemini effect using perturbation theory let us first talk about that what is Gemini effect so i want to discuss that what is Gemini effect so let us have a look at it so Peter Gemann in 1896 he observed that when sodium light sodium light as all of you are uh, know about it that sodium light and it's uh, assumed to be monochromatic and uh, he when he passed this sodium light through magnetic field magnetic field when he passed it through the magnetic field then what he observed that uh, mm, this yellow d line it gets broadened or in other words i can say that in place of single line we are getting more than this means if in the hydrogen atom spectrum sorry in the sodium light say it is the uh, say it is yellow light when magnetic field will be zero but when the same is passed through magnetic field then what we have observed that he observed that it gets broadened or in other words we can say that it can split into more than one line right so this thing which we which was observed right so and this is known as the gemon effect now later in 1897 1897 thomas preston question he reported that that similar effect was observed similar effect was observed but with complicated results but with complicated results means this line does not split into three line but more than three lines and this is known as anomalous gemon effect right and this gemon effect is very useful means the gemon effect effect is very useful useful in measuring the measuring the strength of measuring the strength of stellar magnetic fields magnetic fields and let us now understand this uh, with the help of a some picture which i have taken from the internet or the wikipedia or from other websites so let us have a look at that see this is the phenomena which people have observed that means there is a transition means th these these are basically absorption spectra 
because there is a transition from lower energy level to the higher energy level right and for emission spectra this arrow must be from upper side to the downwards right so if they are like this then th this corresponds to the absorption spectra means light will be emitted and corresponding to these there are the dark lines will be observed right so when no magnetic field is observed only single line will pass there but when magnetic field is applied these three lines are there right so this is the phenomena which was observed by Gman so this is known as Gman effect and uh, there is another very interesting uh, diagram which was I have taken from the Wikipedia say the spectral lines of mercury vapor lamp at wavelength means uh, it's corresponding to single wavelength so right it is a 546.1 nanometer it's showing anomalous Gman effect say let us see say when no field is applied then this is the uh, interference pattern right here we have you uh, here people have used a Fabry Parrot interferometer so here single lines are there but when the magnetic field is applied corresponding to transverse German effect as it was shown here this is the source of light and placed in the magnetic field and this is the two spectrometers one is here and another is here so one corresponds to longitudinal and another corresponds to transverse right so one corresponds to the, this is the transverse view and this is corresponding to the longitudinal view so corresponding to transverse view they have observed these lines right and corresponding to transverse view uh, sorry they uh, sorry this corresponds to the transverse view this these lines and uh, these are the lines uh, with magnetic field split as the longitudinal g effect this corresponds to the longitudinal as we have seen here here only two lines are there longitudinal but here three lines are there corresponds to this transverse right so this is the Gman effect as people have observed in the laboratory these are the this is the interference pattern so how interference pattern has been changed when we have seen it uh, in the presence of the uh, magnetic fields means there is a splitting of lines right so this is all about the Gman effect now I will apply the uh, Gman effect sorry I will apply the perturbation theory to explain the Gman effect where we have not considered the uh, what we call uh, we have not considered the electron spin right so now I am going to talk about Gman effect effect without electron spin without electron spin and here we have used the perturbation theory perturbation theory right so that's what I am doing here so here we have considered we have not considered the electron spin right this we have to keep in mind so so let us consider the hydrogen atom consider the hydrogen atom and let B be the magnetic field magnetic field B be the magnetic field and let mu be the reduced mass of hydrogen atom system of the system and 
this atom is carrying charge minus E. This is the charge. So as the electron is moving in magnetic field, is moving in electric field. So that means the vector potential of this magnetic field is this is the vector potential and the, the magnetic field is represented by this one. Now if we recall electricity and magnetism then according to that this vector potential A can be written as 1 by 2 B cross R and B is equal to del cross A. This is a way that how these are related. This is from the electricity magnetism if you recall. Now the Hamiltonian Hamiltonian and this Hamiltonian is classical analogous. Hamiltonian of the particle of mass means of reduced mass mu carrying charge E carrying charge minus E moving in vector potential A moving in vector potential A is given as Here in place of vectors I am using operators uh, in writing the Hamiltonian because I am talking about the quantum mechanics. So Hamiltonian can be written as 1 by 2 mu P plus E A whole square is the standard result plus B R is the Coulombic potential under which electron is moving. So let me try to simplify it now. So this is equal to P square over 2 mu plus E over two mu. Let me write down this two. This is mixed term it is P dot A plus A dot P right plus e square over 2 mu a operator square plus v I am writing it simply by v not vr so here I can write down it as again p square over 2 mu plus v plus e over 2 mu P dot A, A dot P plus E square over 2 mu this and let us have a look at this now. Say this is one part, this is second part and this is the third part of this Hamiltonian. Let me call this as H naught. This is H prime and H double prime. So what does it mean? Say this is known as unperturbed Hamiltonian. This is known as unperturbed Hamiltonian. Perturbed Hamiltonian. And this is the, these two corresponds to perturbed Hamiltonians this corresponds to perturbed Hamiltonian 
Thus, we can say that this H not means unperturbed Hamiltonian is represented by P square by 2 mu plus B and this H prime is represented by E over 2 mu P dot A plus A dot P it's one part and this is the second term it is E square over 2 mu it is A the square and and when only this part is considered when only this part of Hamiltonian is considered that means it corresponds to first order G man effect it, it is known as first order G man effect and here H double prime means this has been neglected so and this is the when this part is considered this corresponds to second order G man effect so in this lecture I will talk about only the first order G man effect right and try to explain the spectrum right so for this First order G man effect, what should I do? Consider the Hamiltonian. This is the Hamiltonian and which I want to consider, right? And let me write down their values. It is P square by 2 mu plus V plus E over 2 mu. This is P A plus A dot P, right? Here, this P is equal to minus iota H cross del and P square can be written as minus H cross square and del square. Let me put their values here. So if I put their values in this equation, then what I am getting? This h is equal to minus h cross square over 2 mu del square plus v plus e over 2 mu it is minus iota h cross del dot a plus a minus iota h cross del let me simplify this and this minus i attach cross can be taken outside so if I take it outside then I can write down it as minus h cross square over 2 mu del square plus b minus iota e h cross over 2 mu del a plus a del right so now I can write down h psi means when it is operated with psi then it can be written as minus h cross square by 2 mu del square psi plus v psi minus iota e 2 mu h cross del a plus a del into so this can be written as minus h cross square 2 mu del square psi plus v psi minus iota 2 mu h cross del a psi plus a del psi.
so if we simplify this then what i am getting and this corresponds to h not psi so it is h not psi minus iota e over 2 mu h cross and here it is del a psi plus del sorry a del psi a del psi plus a and this will remain as it is it can be written like this right so that's what we are getting here but if we try to look at this this is zero how it is equal to zero let us try to understand it hmm yeah say del dot del dot a can be written as del 1 by 2 as we know that it is b cross r so it can be written as 1 by 2 del b cross r and this can also be written as uh, this can be written as 1 by 2 r del cross b minus b del cross r it can be written like this it's a standard result and this is equal to 0 and this is also equal to 0 as magnetic monopole does not exist so keeping this in mind this term is also equal to 0 so overall this value will be equal to 0 right so if i do it here then i can write down this h psi is equal to h this h psi is equal to h not psi plus sorry not plus but minus minus iota e over 2 mu 2a del psi these two put together so that's what we are getting here now as i know that this t is equal to minus iota h cross del if i use this here again then i can rewrite down this equation as like this this is equal to h not psi plus e over 2 mu twice of a minus iota h cross del psi and this is basically the p operator so if i use its value it is e over 2 mu twice of a p psi right i can write down it like this but what is this a as i know that it is 1 by 2 d cross r and p operator is like this this two will cancel out with it so and in place of this i can write down the this as um, operator form so it is h not psi minus sorry it's not minus what it's plus plus e over 2 mu it is b cross r and how this can be written as using the property of scalar triple product triple product this part can be rewritten as it is b r cross p b dot r cross p and psi will also be there and this is the angular momentum so it can be written like this because angular momentum is r cross p 
So therefore, this H psi, it can be written as H naught psi plus E over 2 mu B dot L psi. Right. So this is our Schrodinger wave equation. Now, and angular momentum has been incorporated into it. So, it means it is H naught psi plus H naught prime, sorry, H prime psi. And where the value of H prime is this one. So, therefore, this H prime is equal to E over 2 mu B dot L. So generally it is customary to choose that that magnetic field along that axis. So keeping this in mind I can simply write down as this as B L Z. So therefore first order energy correction term it can be written as E prime is equal to N H N right and we know that the value of this will be this one so if we use its value I can simply write down it as N E over 2 mu B L Z N and as you know that this LZ its eigenvalue is MLH cross right if I put its value here then it is written as N E over 2 mu B M L H cross as B is the constant because applied field is a constant and ML is also constant H crosses so they can be taken outside so it, it is simply E over 2 mu B M L H cross it is N N and it is 1 always so I can write down this E prime is equal to M L E H cross over 2 mu B so this is the energy corresponding to the perturbation right energy corresponding to the to the applied perturbation that is magnetic field now let us have a look at it now again it's very interesting Since ML can take 2L plus 1 values, ML can take 2L plus 1 values, ML can take 2L plus 1 values and it varies from minus L2 plus 1 in a step of 1, right. So now what we will do, let us now understand the uh, this demon effect using a diagram so first of all consider the uh, spectrum of hydrogen atom now first of all I will consider the spectrum of hydrogen atom according to the Schrodinger wave equation and uh, due to the unperturbed Hamiltonian so see this is the one energy level which I am getting this is another energy level and there is another energy level will be there so here this corresponds to n is equal to 1 this corresponds to n is equal to 1 
n is equal to 2 and n is equal to 3 for the hydrogen atom its energy will be minus 13.6 electron volt here it is the energy axis and its unit will be electron volt and it is minus 3.37 and here its value will be minus 1.5 electron volt roughly so and if I consider various orbitals l is equal to 0 l is equal to 1 l is equal to 2 and so on then all are degenerate so here one s is is also there this is one s level this is two s level it is three s level and similarly it is two p level and it is the 3p level and it is 3d level right so here it is uh, 1s it is 1s it corresponds to 2s it is 3s and it is 2p and it is uh, 3p and it is uh, 3d right and the line in the visible region which we have observed in case of uh, this uh, hydrogen atom spectrum that corresponds to this level to this level there is a transition from this level to this level right so there is a possibility right so this is the transition the line which we have observed for the hydrogen atom and this is just an idea I want to explain the concept it means if it is the spectrum of hydrogen atom and corresponding to it we are getting a line and this line which we are observing it is because of the this type of transition transition between this level to this level n is equal to 3 to 2 right means n is equal to 3 to 2 this transition corresponds to the single line right so let us now see the effect of magnetic field so to see the effect of magnetic field say as we know that e prime is equal to ml e h cross over 2 mu b so as I know that for L is equal to 0 means for S orbital and for L is equal to 1 or L is equal to 2 it is for the P orbital and it is for the D orbital. Here the values of ML is 0. Here ML corresponds to minus 1, 0 and 1 and here ML corresponds to minus 2. 2 minus 1 0 1 and 2 and so on means it's split into no level it's split into three levels and it's split into five levels right and another thing which we have to recall we have to recall delta ml it corresponds to 0 to plus minus and this is the selection rule for the allowed transition means the transition which are allowed only right so keeping all these things in mind let us redraw the energy level diagram say there is one level is there and there is another level and corresponding to there there is one more level this is one level and this is and this level will split into two different levels one level is this these all levels are equally spaced these all levels are equally spaced as we know that for ml is equal to 
let me do one thing say ml ml is equal to its value will be 2 1 0 minus 1 and minus 2 and corresponding to it e prime will be 2 e h cross over 2 mu b right and here it is e h cross 2 mu b and here it is 0 and here minus e h cross 2 mu b and minus 2 e h cross 2 mu b these are the values which we are getting now let us see the transition so say it corresponds to l is equal to 1 and it corresponds to l is equal to 2 and they split according to this scheme so here ml will be minus 1 ml will be 0 ml will be plus 1 and here ml will be minus 2 ml will be minus 1 ml is equal to 0 ml is equal to minus plus 1 and ml is equal to plus 2 and say the difference between every level means this every level it's equally spaced right so that means these all corresponds to e h cross over 2 mu b so this is the difference between every level so now let us keep in mind the selection rules selection rules delta ml is equal to 0 or plus minus 1 so that means the following transitions are possible mm, the one transition is this one say 0 to uh, 1 to 1 this 1 to there is one transition there is another transition 0 to 0 and there is another transition right and or one uh, other type of transitions are also possible so it is say another is this is 2 to 1 then 1 to this and another transition is this one and another transitions are there also possible mm. see 0 to 1 right so these are the various transitions and if we try to look at these all the transitions then this separation or this separation these all are identical see from here to here now it is here to here means three energy levels means these all are having the same energy right say it is delta e1 say it is delta e2 delta e3 and and it is from here to here and it's from here to here so that means delta e2 is is largest one and after that it is delta e1 and here it is delta e3 so it is the largest and after that it comes and la and lastly it is there but all delta e e1 means these are the three energies and all are same similarly all delta e2s are uh, are same and delta e3s are also same thus we are getting only three lines we are getting only three lines so this means where we are getting three lines we are getting only three lines one line and these are the three lines which we are getting right so thus three lines observed are
observed are superposition of superposition of several transition so as clear so this is all about the uh, first order g man effect which we have explained with the help of the uh, perturbation uh, theory so that's all about it